Okay. Good afternoon. Yeah, um, one more day to end of semester, I guess. Um, so, how are things? Um, so the final exam would be a take home, so I'll try to either give it on class on Wednesday or, or perhaps later in the day. Um, you will have two hours to take the exam, just like you would have for the final, final exam. Um, so if somebody insists on coming actually to the class and doing taking the exam, it's okay. But I, I think our, our exam is earlier in the morning, right? So I would rather you take it and turn it in, but uh, but the same set of rules, right? You know, open book, open open notes, uh, no searching and no no sort of cheating, right? Which day is it? Exam. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll give it on next this Wednesday. And you can turn it in on the day when the final exam is, or final exam, or class, class final exam is. It's a take home, right? Yes. So you can take, you can actually take it whenever. Does that make sense? Right. I, th I, think, I think many of you are preparing for graduating and all those things, right? So I would rather take it, do a take home. But if somebody wanted to come to the class and insist on doing it in class, um, they can work something out, right? Uh, I, I don't know what time it is, but sometimes it, it happens to be like 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, so I would rather not come in if I don't have to, right? Um, anyway, so this is the, you know, so we're, we're looking at the video games and stuff, so we're looking at the clients and servers and stuff, um, and the thrust is more towards sort of trying to not how to develop games, but how to make money off of this stuff, right? Because that's 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 the most interesting, more interesting aspects of this. Um, one of the things that these things are not this little, much little less work, is on on another trend in gaming, which is sort of accelerated by um, like your iPhone and stuff, which is casual gaming, right? All, all these things that we are studying are more serious gaming. You sort of get a CD, you sort of get a game, and you sort of pay a subscription fee, and then you sort of play, and these are sort of the, the grand sort of games. Um, but there's other sort of games where it's casual gaming, um, sort of like your Nintendo DSs and PSPs and now iPhones. Uh, you know, so much statistics I saw, like iPhones are sort of equaling Nintendos in terms of number of uh, players and stuff, right? So they're, they're casual because you probably pay like a few dollars at most to play those games, and you don't have these providers, you don't have these players and all those things. So it's not clear how well this will apply to that one. But in the case of more heavyweight games where you're paying a certain amount of money, there is always the notion of cheating, right? You want to cheat to get some sort of advantage, and so the all this uh, all the all the line of research tries to figure out how to address those concerns, how to find who is cheating so they can be kicked out and stuff, right? So there are multiple levels of cheating, right? There, there are lots of different ways of cheating, um, including cheat codes and stuff that you probably, if you search on the web for, for game cheat codes, certain sequence of uh, keys would get you an advantage. And we're not really concerned about those, right? So those, those sort of, you know, you know, you need to kill this one, not this one. This is what how it'll get you go higher. That's sort of okay. There's another line of cheating where you you pay somebody to play the games for you, right? Um, and it's it's actually pretty big, especially you hire somebody in uh, China and, and Korea and all those things. You hire this person and they play. Um, and you you once in a while you hear the stories of somebody dying because they're playing for three days straight and then. Uh, they fall over and stuff. You, you, you've probably seen those once in a while, right? But essentially, you pay this person money, they play it till they attain a certain level, attain certain powers, and then they sell those powers to you, right? Um, whatever you may feel about the ethics of those, those are not the concern here because essentially a human being is playing to attain those levels, right? So when they become that level, once they sell that to you, when you start to play, it's purely your skills at that point, right? So they may have gained certain levels to give to you, but if you suck, then it doesn't really matter that you gain that, gain that level, you'll, you'll fail quickly, right? So those are the things we don't worry about either, 
but that sort of thing happens, right? What we're trying to worry about is how you can sort of cheat, uh, cheat in the game where you do something, you, where you manipulate the game, where you, where you change the game uh, to get, gain some advantage, right? So these are, these are ways that can be detected. This, these are ways that, that the gaming system, uh, you modify the game program to make this happen, right? The reason why you're able to do that is because you control the console, right? So one of the, the you, you're also looking at this from the homework assignment perspective. One way of assigning, you know, creating a game is you send everything to a server which validates this stuff, which figures out what has to happen, which figures out what has to be shown to every user, and then send the stuff to you. And given the network conditions, that's not possible. So what you do is you send the updates to each node. So each node gets this update, and it's supposed to replay it the same way on the different games. And, and this sort of cheats that this particular first paper is looking at is how do you change the game such that you gain some advantage, right? So one of the ways you can do that is to, for example, some of the games, you're supposed to be shooting in the dark, right? So let's assume there's no light in this room and I'm trying to shoot people. So I need to shoot without seeing anything. So the screen is supposed to show a blank screen and I'm supposed to start shooting, but the game system has to know where everybody is, right? Because if it doesn't know, then I won't be able to shoot somebody, right? So the program knows where everybody is, the program knows where the room is, and the program also has to make it look black, so I can't see, so on the screen, I don't see anything, but the program itself knows where things are, right? And those are usually, so if you can go in and change the code such that the light is flipped on, right? So your, your friends are playing with the lights turned off, so they're shooting in the dark, whereas you're playing with the lights turned on, so you get an unfair advantage and you, you gain advantage, right? So, so that sort of a thing. So um, the, 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 the main problem that you're trying to address is I have to send all the state to, the, to your local system. So your lo local system knows far more than what you're supposed to know. So if I can tweak this local system to do stuff that your other contemporaries don't do, then you gain advantage, then you can do better stuff, right? Um, so, for example, you can you can change gravity, right? Just for you. So you do certain things that your friends can't do because of the way uh, you 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 take care of gravity better than they do, um, and and bad things happen, right? And so, so that's that's the problem that they want to solve. They want to try to figure out how do you how do I know whether you modified your your console, right? And the consoles can either be like the, the ones you buy from like Sony or, or V or something like that, you know, coming from, a, from the vendor, right? And the, they have firmware and you, can, you have to mark with the firmware to fix these things. What this, is, what this particular paper is concerned more is on PC gaming, right? So if I, can, I, can I somehow figure out what you're doing on your computer? So you have a regular PC running, say, Windows, and you're running this game program, right? Can I somehow figure out that you modified the program such that you're having an unfair advantage without me um, having control over your software? So I can, I can do this very easily if I have complete control over your hardware, right? So I can sort of see what's going on. So I don't want to have complete control, what can I do, right? That's sort of the lines where they go, right? The reason why Intel got involved with, with this, uh, with this, so if you look at the, the co-authors, there's the Portland State, and there's also Intel, which happens to be sort of across the street. And the reason why Intel is involved is the technology that they're using, long time back, was called uh, trusted computing, right? So if, many of you may have heard about it, um, or maybe not, but over the like, last, um, like almost a decade, Intel has been, Intel and other companies have been pushing this notion of a trusted computing, right? So one thing they realize is on a, on a PC, nobody has any sort of any control over what goes in a machine. You, know, you get to run your own BIOS, you get to run your own stuff. So you can muck around with all the stuff. So viruses have as much power to change your system as the legitimate users. So one way to avoid these viruses and stuff is that they've been pushing is to have a certain part of your system be trusted and not anything can run on the trusted computing, uh, computing side. And there's a certain part which is untrusted, right? So part of being trusted means that there has to be some sort of grand bargain where your PC manufacturer 
make some component which is trusted and the like the uh, Microsoft, let's like say Office, right? Office interacts with your trusted component to create your documents. So you can create prominence trails to say this document was modified on that particular PC. There's no way you can, you're supposed to be able to modify this stuff. So there is a component which adds these things that modifies these things that can, that can add certain things that you cannot circumvent because it happens in hardware, right? So, so you move away from this model of your PC where anything goes, you can get a change of BIOS and all those things to a model where certain things are more trusted, certain things are not trusted, right? So in the, in the best case, this is a, it's a great scheme because the administrators or something can sort of reach into your system and make, make modifications, make, make sure that everything is fine. So for example, uh, I may be able to say, this particular laptop was stolen, I disable it, right? So I can send something to you securely, and the, the secure component would, would react to this stuff. And you as a user will not be able to muck with that, right? Naturally, a lot of people were opposed to this stuff because they didn't like the, the sort of big brotherish kind of sort of issues, right? So if you're, a, if you're a corporate user, you probably don't really care much about it because you, you probably have these policies. But many of you who have normal desktop and laptops, don't probably want that, so there's a lot of opposition to it, right? Um, so the backstory is that a lot of opposition, people tried to kill it, but like no, many of these projects, they just don't die, they just morph into something where you don't uh, call them with the bad terms before you invent new, new terminology where it's more uh, plausible, right? So this is one, this, this particular group is one of those groups where they're trying to resurrect the, the notion of trusted computing but not with all the grand goals, but a little bit of goals to see how these things happen, right? And I think, um, so if you, so uh, Intel's perspective is if they do this stuff and they have this Intel uh, sort of like Sentry you no know, kind of thing, you know, so have this product where you have this trusted kind of stuff, then they can basically get your corporate user to say, for so Nordem can say, we can only, for, for our corporate users, we can only use this particular hardware, which have, which, you know, which um, happens to be owned by Intel and stuff, so they get you know they get better market share over their competitors and stuff kind of stuff. So the reason why they were involved with this is not only do they want to give a good reason why corporate users have to be involved with this stuff, they also want the game users. So the ultimate goal would be to say, you as a game developer, if I can give you some reasons why you would want to run your software on this this particular platform that we run and that gives us an advantage, then you as a game user can tell, you can tell your uh, clients that you can have buy my games, but if you run it on these approved platforms, then I give you some break. But if you run it on a regular run of the machine, run of the mill machines, or, or for example, on AMD machine, then these games won't work or you don't get certain points. So that's, that's sort of the um, more no, motivation for Intel to get into the stuff, right? Um, there are a lot of machines which actually sell, or on, which are on the mar market, which do these sort of things, right? How many of you muck with the, um, the BIOS and, and, and those sort of things? So if you look at the newer BIOSes, right? I forget what the, the latest one is, I think AMT or something, right? So the newer Intel BIOSes are not just a BIOS, but it's programmable, right? So you can remotely connect to it in a secure fashion. So of course it has to be set up by your, uh, your IT staff, but essentially they can set, up, set it up to have a password and all those things. But what that allows is your IT staff can look into your machine, they can see what is on your screen, they can, they can look at all the registers, they can look at all the memory contents, they can look at basically what's happening in your system, right? And they can reboot your system, they can do all these things. Not the full goals that people talked about before, but at least to the level that I know what, what you're doing, right? So I can, I can sort of go into a machine and um, things like reboot, right? Reboot is so nice because OIT does not have to go into each desk, they can just reboot the machine. Not just reboot any time, but basically go in and see what the screen is, and if the screen is showing this, don't reboot yet. So you know, so you're doing this stuff. So you're now running, you have your operating system, and you have this little monitor on the side, which is outside of this operating system. The operating system does not know that this exists, and you're kind of peeking into the system to see what's going on, right? So you have this, this sort of this, this monitor, which securely connects to some control panel. Right? So 
conceptually, you still have your CPU and you still have your operating system running on top of it. This is what your operating system and, and your, your hardware see, and, they, and they're reacting to this stuff. So you're running a program like normal stuff, except I can come through this monitor and poke and see what's going on in your system. You can't really know that I'm doing this. You can't really see what I'm doing here. But I can see everything. So I can capture every stuff about you, right? So I can find out stuff about what is being displayed on the screen. I can look at your memory pages. I can look at what passwords you have and stuff like that, right? So if you sort of think about it, it's not a, a good feeling because if you crack this, basically I can know everything. So I can kind of watch monitor your screen to see what you're typing, what your passwords, and all those things, right? Um, so does that creep you out if you if you say that a capability exists on a, on a laptop, right? So. Here's a good use of this stuff. You know, if, you, if that creeps you out, here's a good use of what you can do with this stuff. So what they're saying is, I, you know, you're gonna run a game. You run this game on over here. We don't care what, it, what you're running. So it could be Mac, or it could be, uh, it could be Windows, or it could be Linux, or what have you. All I want is this monitor, which of course has to come from your, from Intel, which, which is sort of involved in this project. And they're gonna let you do, run your games, right? They're going to monitor your system to see if your system state at a particular time was what it's supposed to be. And we're going to infer that if it's not what it's supposed to be, then they are trying to cheat, right? So I may look into something on the screen, and if it's not what it's supposed to be, then I believe it's cheating, then I'm going to disable you, right? The way to do that is now you, you have this control center, right? You securely connect to this monitor and say, oh, for me, like you know, at this point, um, I think that this game, the user should be seeing something like this. You go in and verify that this is what they're seeing, right? For example, you can say, you go in and see if the gravity variable is still what I thought it should be, right? So you, you may have hacked this, this game program somehow and changed the, for example, somewhere along there's a gravity variable. You just changed it to something else, right? You happily go along, you happily are, are going over here, but this monitor once in a while sort of sneaks in, sees what it is supposed to be. This program has no way of knowing that somebody is monitoring this stuff, and you see it, and if, it, if the variable is changed, then essentially you can disable this user, right? Um, that's, that's the general goal, right? But turns out, you don't really want to do this, you don't really want to pay the overhead of looking at everything. Naturally, I can look at the screen and everything. That means either the, the computation has to happen here, but more interestingly, it has to happen somewhere else. So I don't want to be sort of sitting there and monitoring every aspect of the stuff. So I want to sort of sample once in a while. I want to run, I, don't, I won't tell you when, right? At random point, I will check, check your system. And if it looks like it's, it's been tampered, then I'm gonna kick you out. So that's the key. So you as a hacker, should know that this big brother on your laptop, which is monitoring the system, and at some random point, it'll do some random audit, which you don't know what it is, because the audit is gonna come from a central server that the game company owns, and he'll come in, he'll, he'll see what the, what, you know, what your system is, and if, it, if you're doing something that you're not supposed to do, then we will uh, uh, figure you as cheat, otherwise we'll, we'll let you go, right? Do you like this? Do you, do you like this sort of a approach, thinking? So, so this paper is interesting because it, this this has the weight of Intel, right? And Intel really wants to get into make PCs the preferred platform. So, you know, they would like to sort of push this. So this is not. So, the next paper we'll see is more of an academic paper, which will address some issues, but it's not clear how far you can go. I mean, when you have the weight of Intel behind you, it's likely gonna go far, right? Um, but when you, when you say this to people, either people have two sort of uh, re reaction, right? People, some people say, yeah, this is a way to go, and others find this whole thing sort of bothersome, right? Um, and you, you pick your response, right? But, but that's the thing. And the idea here is the game company would say, you don't have to let us do this stuff. You don't have to let us monitor this stuff. But if you won't let the stuff, let us monitor this thing, then we will treat you as, um, I mean, some, some, some penalty, right? And, and, and um, incentive schemes for letting you do this sort of a thing, is, it's another uh, yucky stuff, right? Um, 
So I, I, I like this paper because it's sort of a weird way of looking at this stuff because it's sort of monitoring your system all the time, but it's it's a potentially uh, dangerous uh, mind because you know, you're you're having a system. So what does it prevent you from mon instead of monitoring the 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 G looking at your bank balance or whatever, right? And and you can still do. That. I mean, so now you're trusting the game company to sort of do the right thing, and and there goes right. Um, so this was in, in NetGames uh, 08. So essentially, the idea here was. Um, cheating is important for the game community, but it's not as bad as hacking, right? It's not as bad as hacking because the damage is mostly just just stays within the the game, right? So when when somebody cheats, legitimate players get frustrated because they don't have the advantage that the other person has, so they can do stuff that you can't do, so you tend to lose. Um, and for a game developer. Or, or, the, or the game uh, hosting service, this is bad because now somebody is, you know, uh, um, now your customers are going to leave you because if there are too many cheats. So you, you want to sort of have a certain amount of cheating, but if the cheating becomes so rampant, right? Um, one, of the, one of the things that I, I, I never quite realized was if you have the cheats sort of get out of hand, right? So, you know, so we're all playing in a game, then I find that I'm cheating, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm beating all of you. Then you cheat to counteract me. So eventually, we all go into this arms race where we are all trying to cheat and cheat and cheat, right? So at, at, at some point, we have basically programs playing against each other, except one human being, and they're going to be clobbered, right? Um, because all of us are cheats, we're not really running the game, except this one person who's really playing the game. And they would leave because they, they can't... Um, I mean, they, they, there's no way they can win. And, but once they leave, it's all bots playing against each other. And at some point, you lose interest because, you know, why, why am I paying money for my computer to um, fight with everybody else? So I leave. So, um, the, so the, game comp the company uh, loses customers, which is what they care about, right? <coughs> um, and again, again the, the reason here is, you know, if, if in, in traditional systems, you have trusted systems which do this stuff. So usually, you don't run it, your your checking book account uh, database on your client, right? So you send your money to the bank, you withdraw your money from the bank, which is behind a secure server. So banks don't have to worry about what you do with your account, right? So because they are doing it within within secure service. So if you want to withdraw cash, you send the notion that I want to withdraw cash to the bank, and it does what it has to do, right? Whereas in this system, because network is not fast enough, I have to send how much money I have to all of you. I have to send that I'm withdrawing money to all of you. I am kind of have to trust that you only withdraw what you're supposed to withdraw, right? And the temptation for you to manipulate the system to do more goes up because now you have all the state, um, and it's up to the program to make sure that um, um, to, to do the right thing, right? Um, and 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 we have to realize that you can only take it so far, right? Because they own the system, right? I mean, you know, the, after all, this is your or your PC, so I can't completely demand full control over the system, right? So the game company cannot say, "I want, I want to completely lock it down," right? You can say it a little bit on the on the PS3 side, but even then, if you look, you know, there's this this hack firmware for for the consoles and stuff, so. Um, and there's only so, far, so much you can go because, you know, of course, the client wants this stuff. Um, but again, it's not, you know, it's not life or death kind of thing because it, it, it it's typically only affects the game. So we don't have to treat it sort of like um, if you patch your firmware on your PS3, we don't have to send the FBI against you because it's not that bad. It, though it's still still an important part. Right? Uh, again, you know, so the um, security breach is not. Catastrophic because usually private data is not stolen, or whatever private data you get to the game is stolen, not necessarily a bank account and stuff like that. Um, and usually it's not used to attack some other machine. Yeah, usually it's it's um, it's easy to undo the damage because essentially if I detect that you are you are the one who's cheating, I can kick you out and I'm, I'm good, right? Um, and the other nice thing is if you're if you're worried about security from a from a general security perspective. Um, one of the awful things with security uh, is you can act, especially with the reputation-based system, right? You can be good for a long period of time. You only have to be bad for a very short amount of time, cause enough damage, and then continue to be good, right? So unless I catch you in the act of being bad, you could escape the stuff, right? So you could you could stay here for four years. You can be a good citizen. On one day, you start 
a program which destroys all the computers. You know, you start this violent event, and then you go, to, go back to being good, right? And you could do that because the, the, the nature of the, those attacks are, I need to attack this one target, right? I don't have to continuously attack this stuff. So, um, so you said can come in, do this damage, and then go away. So unless I catch them on the, on the act at that point, then they are, they are gone, right? Whereas the nice thing, nice thing here is the cheaters want to stay in the game, right? So you don't cheat to not get the benefits of what, what happened. So I don't want to come in, randomly shoot, people and then immediately leave uh, because I want to enjoy what I did, so I want to stay around. So I, I can, I can I, you know, so since you're going to be there for a longer period of time, I, can, I have more time to detect what happened and, and react to it, stuff, so, right? Um, and again, so the you know cheater will eventually be caught. So you hope you know because you know once once you begin to cheat, you you tend to repeat those stuff, and, and um, you know it, it's easy to catch. And, um, and cleanup is usually easy because a I can undo all the stuff you did and and ban you from game. So you know you have to get a new ID and stuff to come back. Uh, that's the easy way to do. And the um, cost of being caught is high for you. Um, the the sorry not you but. Uh, yeah, player, uh, uh, the, the player who's playing not, not necessarily for, for system. I mean, you lose a CD key to get in, um, and you lose the monthly subscription fee, uh, but more importantly, you lose everything that you built so far, right? Um, hopefully, the people who are doing this kind of a cheating are not the novices. So you spend a lot of time, you build uh, your game status to be at a point where cheating sort of makes sense, right? I don't play online games, so there's no point in me cheating to go from level zero to level one, um, right? Uh, you know, do all this stuff because I would rather just try to play it, play my way out, rather than you know, once you go higher levels. Uh, so I lose all those stuff, right? So I, need, I start back as a novice, which is not what I want. So there's motivation to make this happen. So so you know, you're, not, you're not trying to to disable all forms of cheating. You just want to have enough de deterrence. You just tell the players that. I may be randomly auditing the system. If I find you, I'm going to kick you out. And um, it's in, not intrusive enough for you. It, it's rare enough that you know we, we both win. I don't have to be continuously monitoring your every move. And the, but the problem is that if I catch you, you you're thrown out. So uh, most people do this stuff, right? So they use a, a hardware-based measurement uh, mechanism, which incidentally was built by by Intel, so um, essentially your, your, your program has no control over, so this program has no knowledge that this is being monitored, so it cannot hack this stuff. And, and that's that by definition of how this thing is built, right? So the way it's built, there's no way for the system to know this stuff. If you breach this, that's a separate problem, not the problem with this particular approach, right? So the, the, they go through lots of examples of what are the kinds of cheat and what what you can what what you can detect with, with each of those. Um, the um, so you know, some of the cheats is you're you're cheating by manipulating the data, right? Um, so you can see what is being displayed on the screen to figure out something about the system, right? Um, I forget what's the equivalent for that one. So your, your cheat program doesn't understand the program. It doesn't modify the program. It just looks at the graphics frame buffer to see what is being displayed. So based on that, it can then figure out something about the game. So they, then it can detect. So for example, if this is what they saw, then they can detect those what, what they're seeing from the game, right? So I didn't modify the program itself. I just modified the frame buffer on the on the hardware, right? So that's that's one way of cheating. The other one is I'm 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 reading stuff that I'm not supposed to, right? So maybe I, 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 on another program which which you know breaches your operating system and reads variables that it's not supposed to read, right? So it may have something about uh, the value of, of gravity somewhere, so I can read it, and the corresponding stuff is I can modify it, right? So what what happens is. If you know that your game program is using a variable called gravity to decide how, how your whole whole world works, right? So I write another program on this system. I don't touch your game program at all. So your game program, if this is your game program, that's safe. 
it continues to do what it's trying to do. I write another program, right? Since I own this machine, I can break the system. I can read something into your program memory, right? I'm not going through your program at all. I'm, I'm looking at the memory. So I, I know this particular memory region happens to be for gravity. So I modify this stuff directly without your program knowing at all, right? So I didn't mark with your program at all. Your program continues to be whatever it's doing. And your program logic decides that it has to look at this particular in integer to figure out what the gravity is. I just changed it using unauthorized write data write. Um, so I can't do integrity check on the program itself because the program is, is the, what, what it's supposed to be. I just changed something to get uh, advantage, right? These are one, some ways to get around the stuff because you know, some other things I can modify the program itself and some other times I don't have to modify the program. I can do these things without, uh, your, your program will still be the same but essentially I'm a program to corrupt your, corrupt your system, right? And again, you can, I can do this a lot easier because I own this computer so I can, I can corrupt these things uh, quite easily, right? And more, more interesting stuff happens when I do code injection, right? What, what game programmers would do is, from your CD to loading it into the system, they can do it securely, right? So your program, your, your, um, the, 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 the person who wrote the game program can verify that they can keep this program encrypted. So they can, when they load it into the system, they can ensure that whatever is in the CD is what gets loaded. But what I can do is, once it's loaded, since it's all a memory, I can write another program which goes and corrupts these things, right? So I can do that by either taking, yeah, I can hard patch a program, right? I can take your existing program code, I modify the code so that now it does what, what I have to do, right? And I can inject code, I can, I can find some piece of area to write, write, uh, uh, write something for, my, for myself. Um, I can allocate more memory. So the more control I get into this program, I can, for example, create a new thread, right? Or I can create, uh, modify something. So you loaded everything fine. Then I, I, I come around and I, I use some weakness of your program to modify your program to do what I want, right? And the way I do that is I, I go and modify the, the memory, memory section. And the game runs as usual, suddenly, realize, suddenly comes into your, your code that you wrote and all bets are off, right? And it's, it's, um, this, is, this is traditionally how you would attack a machine when you write a virus and stuff. You, you're modifying the program to do something else. Uh, but, the, but the thing to remember here is, since I own the machine, um, I can sort of do these things a lot more easier than if this is on a machine that you don't want, right? So if I have to do this on, for example, his machine, I have to first break through his machine defenses to get on his system and then do all the stuff to attack his program, right? Whereas in this case, he owns the machine, right? So he, he has this game running and he's actively doing this stuff on the side so there is nothing which prevents, it's, it's a little bit easier to do this thing than, than on a real system, right? Make sense? I mean, this is always true, right? So if you, if you had, this, this goes more into security kind of thing, but essentially if you have a program, right? Um, if you have a program on your system, right? What, you know, easy, easy way to attack your system is to change the program by essentially rewriting the code. So if this one says print uh, hello world, right? And this is the actual program. If I somehow have, I have access to modify this to do something else, you know, instead of saying print hello world, it says destroy world, right? I can just modify this, this piece of code and I can do this stuff, right? Because all programs, all they're trying to do is, once it's loaded by the operating system, it's running through those instructions. So if the instructions are changed, then all bets are off, right? And there are a lot of ways you can do that. You can modify, you can create, uh, you can make it call functions it's not supposed to call. You can change the way the stack variables are returned. So the way it's written, uh, where it returns, you can change the functions calling and stuff. And each one of them you will use based on how this game was written, right? 
the game developers know that you, you, you're going to do some of this stuff, so they, they're going to try to do some things to make sure that you're not, it's not going to be easy. But again, since you own the system, since you're your root on the system, um, you can implement any of this stuff. You can change the, the return address, you can create a new thread, insert a thread routine, and then now you have complete control. So that thread is now running inside the game, and it has complete control over what's, what's going on, and so, forth, so on and so forth. Right? And, and you know, for, for somebody who's writing hacking code, this is not that that hard. I mean, since since they have full control over the system, right? they can run uh, external process which you can attach to your system, so it's like a debugger, right? You can become a like a debugger program. Deb debugger program essentially attached to your program and basically know what, which instructions you're going through. And now I can do the same thing. I can I can basically sing, sing, you know single stepping through the instructions to see where you're going, see when I can inject myself and do what I have to do. Um, I can I can change the files. I can change what you're writing, where the status you're writing, and and, and so on and so forth. Right? Um, and uh, you know there are more. So the, I can change the hardware. Um, hardware facilities, right? Uh, so you can do a lot of different stuff. So you can change, so if your game is expecting input from a mouse, right, or, 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 or a joystick or something to see where you're going. So if I want to, one way to manipulate that is maybe the human being can only move the mouse so far or something, right? So I can write a program which essentially creates these hardware events, which like mouse events, and then gives it surreptitiously to your program. So your program thinks it's it's actually being controlled by a human being because inputs are coming from the mouse driver, even though it's actually being sent from your program and to make it look like, so if, you know, if, if the program wants to make you move a certain way, it just sends the mouse events. So your program knows no difference, you know, it sees all this mouse uh, controls and it, it, it does what it's supposed to do. And it looks like it's, it's reacting, right? So one of the examples, you know, they, they're talking about is, you know, so the, in the in the like I mentioned before, the the Warcraft three game, right? Um, so there are all these these things, all these um, the player things, right? You may be able to see those little things, and there's a green bar show how much life they have, right? So at this particular time, it's supposed to be dark. This is what you're supposed to see, right? Um, you don't see this map. This map shows where you are and where the other other things are, where, where you can shoot them, right? And and this, you know, in that view, you see where you are, where the other things are, right? If you knew where the other things are, this becomes sort of trivial, right? So if, if I'm here and I need to shoot all of them, and, you know, it's not easier to play this game than this game, right? This game, I don't know where things are, but since the client has to know all the state, right? Because if it doesn't know the state, then if I shoot this way, it won't know that I, I, I hit something, right? So the, the client program knows this, knows all the state, but it's not showing it to you. So as long as I can change um, what that trigger is, right? So if it happens to be some variable that I know, all I have to do is attach myself. And essentially, when, when it says you're not supposed to see it, I just flip it. So I don't have to change the game program at all, right? So maybe there's a thing which says like, you know, invisible equals true or something, and all I have to do is change it to false, and your game code itself will show me all the stuff, right? Then, so now I'll of course win this game because um, it is a lot more trivial than other players who are actually playing it in the right way, right? So, um, so their approach, you know, again depends on this monitor monitor stuff. And so the um, the they can so the the, the the challenge is to figure out what should be monitored to figure out what happens, right? So uh, you don't so the, the 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 on one extreme, I need to be able to monitor everything about this game. So I need to know the complete state of this operating system, complete state of the hardware, complete state of the DLS, complete state of the everything. Right? So on a modern machine, these are a few gigabytes worth of data, and I don't want to ship all that data to the central server to figure out what's going on. And so here are some things I can use to validate these things. Right? And again, this won't be useful for other purposes. So this won't be useful for, for, a, for a database something because the threat model there is different. Here it's, it's a game, 
it's not a life or death situation. Um, so I can check the code integrity, the, the functional pointer violation. I, I can see where, where things are being pointed. I can see sort of, so essentially the, the, the idea here is the game developer knows what you may be doing and essentially I have to check those, right? So if I know that, if I find that one of the things that, you know, the, the invisibility sc screen was, was, can be marked, you sort of see where the variable is and then you see if it is what it should be, right? Um, and it's not that trivial because it may be relocated remember from the operating system uh, world. You don't know exactly where that particular uh, address should be, but you sort of know where they should be, so you're trying to check that, right? Um, so you can, you can do a, you know, uh, the function pointers where they're pointing to, you can see where the static code is loaded uh, and stuff like that. Um, you can scan for injected pages. Essentially, all the stuff that is possible from here to make sure that, so essentially you, you, you tell this monitor to scan for stuff. You can say, check to see where all the DLLs are loaded, and send it to me, right? So you, you check, you, you mark down all the stuff, and send it across. Um, you can set memory watch points, you see you know, how, how these variables, such important variables are changing. Um, you can see instruction count. You can see execution range. How far how far your program is running? So you know I know I know that this particular part of the program should only run within this range. If it's going beyond that stuff, something is wrong. I can do code timing. I can do code timing to see how much time you're taking with this particular code, and that'll give me indication that you're doing more than or what I suspect you should be doing. Um, I can I can see the the sequence of system calls. Right, so you're supposed to, if you went through the regular code, you should be calling these system calls if it's the same uh, kind of stuff. Um, IOPath validation, you know, again, to make sure that the input is coming from actual mouse and not uh, simulated mouse. Um, a whole, whole, whole set of tricks, and all those are tied to what this monitor can do, right? And this specific to this particular hardware, um, what, what they can allow you. Um, so essentially, the, 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 the way they expect this to happen is you have a game on your machine that you control, and I have this monitor on this machine that again goes to the game controller, to the player account. So this controller frequently checks, you know, asks your, your auditor to make sure that your system is doing what it's supposed to do. And then uh, if you violate the stuff, it can disable your account, right? And again, the, 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 the thing to remember is this auditor has control over your machine, right? It's doing all this sampling, but it can also do the sampling to other programs. So if you're running, say, Quicken on this machine, it can do the sampling to figure out what is your check balance if it so wanted, right? So instead of, so <coughs> the question is, do you trust the owner of the system, right, <coughs> with respect to the game, or do you trust, trust the game developer with respect your own system, right? The bargain you're doing is by letting the game company run this, have control over your auditor, they have control over your system. Uh, the, 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 the assumption here is you would, you would trust the game, game, uh, game developer because they're hopefully a bigger company and hopefully they won't do something malicious, but that's the nature of the system. You're giving up some of your privacy to get the benefits you want. Um, and again, you don't want it to be, since you don't control this network, right? you don't have too much of bandwidth here, so the controller would call this auditor infrequently and hopefully not get too much data back, otherwise you'll notice and otherwise you'll, you'll, you'll be, um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll hurt. The general assumption here is, I'm not gonna tell you when and what I'm going to look at, right? The, all you do is you give control over the auditor to the system um, and the controller will periodically come in and ask you. You, as a owner, have no idea when it's gonna do what it's gonna do, and that's the key to the system, right? So they assume that since you don't know, you'd rather be good because you don't know when it's when you're gonna be audited, um, and, and, and that's the stuff, right? And, and um, I guess it's sort of like, like the, how the whole academia thing works, right? I don't have to check all the exams. I sort of look at randomly to see if somebody's cheating, and. Um, and the sampling system should work, right? Um, so it, it, it again boils down to the, you know, the, um, the auditor 
Um, and it depends on the fact that you have no control over the auditing, auditing system. It's hardware-based. Um, even though you own the system, you have no control over how to manipulate the system or how to anything inside the auditor, right? You do have control on whether you want the audit, the, the game company should have control over your auditor, right? So it's usually password protected, and you as owner can say, I don't want to deal with this stuff, I don't want to give the game company any control over my machine at all. But beyond that, you have no control over manipulating this stuff. You can't change this program, you can't, you can't muck with this stuff. Um, so you can either let the game company in or not, but you cannot prevent the game company from auditing you once you give them control over your system, right? Or you can't specifically prevent some things from happening. You can't say, I would like you to do everything, except don't check that I modify this variable. You can't do that. I mean, it's, it's all or nothing, right? And it's important because otherwise the system, uh, the whole thing does not work. Um, so they give a list of all the, all the commands that they did and what the kinds of cheating that, they, that gets caught, right? Um, there, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that the game cheats are happening. It's also very hard to figure out how, what is the actual rate, rate of how these things happen, right? Um, because most of the times, the, they don't publish, publish what they're doing, right? So if you, if you figure out a way to get advantage, you don't publish this to the whole world because then everybody gets the same advantage. So um, it's sort of like the, like the security kind of research. You're sort of going into the dark side a little bit to figure out um, how important each of those things are, right? So the assumption here is direct function calls is an important thing to protect using that mechanism, right? What you really want to know is if any cheats actually use this at all, um, and you don't know because unless you are part of the hacking community, you may not even know that the people are using this. So this is a general set of functions, right? Um, and this is a very, very hard topic in, in terms of not just the games and everything, but especially in games and you know, the other related work in looking at this stuff. And um, yeah, cheating is bad, and this is one way to detect that. Um, so, what is the, what the, you know, what is the impression of, of people who listen to this stuff? Is this a nice idea of? Um, Would you, let, would you let the game company do this on A, your game console, like your uh, PSP or uh, PS3 or one of those things, or B, your main computing, like laptop or desktop, right? Would you let, let on the console? Yeah, no, the console's already pretty locked down. It's not using really sensitive data or anything on there, so that'd be fine with that. But consoles, people also muck with the firmware, right? The, um, yeah, I mean, it, and there are some legitimate reasons. I mean, like with, with the Xboxes, at least, as long as you don't connect to their actual you know, network service, then you can mod if you want. So, um, yeah, for this to work, you have to connect to the server, right? right. So, I mean, you can't do it with the network games with the modern things. Yeah. Which, I mean, I would argue it's probably a good thing because I don't want to be playing with people with modern Xboxes. Mm -hmm. That, that's one thing I never understood, right? Because, I mean, even though I would like to cheat for a little bit, if I cheat too much, right, th then what's the point of, I mean, you, you, you go from playing to become a programmer, right? Um, me, does it make sense? I mean, you don't have to play anymore because all you're doing is making these moves, and I don't, I don't know what, how far you take this stuff, right? Um, weird. Yeah. Um, but so on, on, a, on a desktop, would, would you think about? Uh, I'd be somewhat nervous about you know, just letting them inspect all my uh, mm -hmm. you know, local memory and stuff. So, um, so um, I, I, I know that the, the Macs don't have it, or I've, I've never seen them on the Macs. On the, on the PCs, um, they have this AMT stuff. So if you, when you go through their your BIOS, right, you see this, this AMT and other things depending on the version that you have. Um, which does a lot of this stuff, right? So your, your PC may already have all the capabilities of doing this stuff. Um, though, if you look at the stuff, you know, by default it's disabled. You have to set a password to, to leave control. Um, and once you set up the password, it's really fantastic because you can do the screen dump, right? You can do screen dumps, and the, and the really nice thing is you can do a reboot. Um, 
on a machine which cannot be rebooted otherwise sort of thing, right? Because this is, your reboot is coming from this monitor which has nothing to do with your system, so you can kind of do this kind of nice things. So it's really good from that kind of a control over your system. Um, and I encourage you to uh, look into uh, more on the Windows kind of side, right? Um, that's all for this slide, and, and we are sort of out of time. And the other paper is it's there, and essentially they were trying. It's more sort of academic kind of thing. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out if you're if you're a human being or a bot, and bot is a program kind of thing, right? The way they realize that is um, you're you're walking through a system, and they want to track where you're walking. The theory is if you are a bot, you don't walk the same way as a human being because human beings are walking maybe with a mouse or a trackpad or whatever, and human beings are not able to control the, human, the, the, the screen thing accurately. So the assumption is human beings walk differently than bots, which tend to be more programmed, programmed walking, so the, the, the tra track may be uh, different, and they actually show that you can use that to figure out. So if you're walking for a while, they can, based on your walking path, they can see whether you are a human being or a, or a bot, right? And because well, bots, the assumption is they walk in a more predictable fashion, right? I didn't, I didn't stress that too much because it's, it's again game of cat and mouse, right? So once the, the cheats know that this is what they're happening, they add randomness into the walk, so the, the walk becomes more human-like kind of stuff. So you kind of go, um, you know, so first you find out that bots tend to walk in a smooth fashion, then you d detect some bots, and then the bots change themselves to walk more erratic fashion, then you, you, you try to find something else. There's a lot of papers like that. I mean, you, you do A, the bots do B, and then you do C, but you know, so on and so forth. Um, I'm just kind of stuff, right? Um, so I guess I'll see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs>